everybody. This is Michelle with WP Coffee Talk, and this is our very first ever episode. I am so honored today to have Allie Nimmons in here with me um, as my first guest, guinea pig victim. You choose whatever word works best for you. I'd like to say she's my new friend, so I'm excited to have you here with me, Allie. Um, I'm using my Wonder Woman mug today. This was a, a gift from Terry Twitich from Pittsburgh. Um, uh, WordCamp Pittsburgh. I met her several years ago. She, she slept on my couch for WordCamp Rochester last year. And as a thank you, she sent me a birthday present of my Wonder Woman mug. And I was going to lie and say I'm drinking coffee, but it is five o'clock in the afternoon. I'm drinking water right now. So we'll <laughs> see. Um, as we go, I might get bold uh, and some other nights just decide to have sleepless nights, drink three cups of coffee in one evening and go from there. But Allie, I am so pleased to have you on the on the show today. Our very first ever, our what do they call it, the maiden voyage? Um, yeah. And so I'm just, you know, I'm grateful. I think you saw saw this on Twitter, maybe. Yeah, I saw and, it on Twitter. And, I think I follow you, or else somebody that I know had retweeted it, and that got it in front of me. Fantastic. Well, uh, introduce yourself. Tell me a little bit about what you do, who you are. Uh, I'm Allie Nimmons. I live in North Miami, Florida currently. Um, I uh, own two small independent businesses, um, one through which I design and build websites for small businesses, other small businesses, and the other one is specifically for nonprofits. So that business is just geared toward building sites for nonprofit organizations. So it's a little bit different, different, different different. Uh, the services are a little bit different. The pricing is a little bit different um, just so that I can sort of nourish my soul in addition to, you know, everything else on top of that. Um, yeah. And I just, I do that from home every day. I don't go outside a whole lot. Um, uh, but yeah, that's, that's generally what I do. Great. Tell us the names of your business. Business says. Oh. Uh, Pixel Glow Web Design is the for-profit and Beam Web Design is the nonprofit. And it's pixelglowwebdesign.com and beamwebdesign.com. And they're beautiful sites. I did look at them a little bit earlier today. Very nice. And that's how I discovered that you're a YouTuber too. And we'll get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. But first, I want you to show me your mug. Okay. So this is my mug. It is a black and orange and, and white mug that I got at WordCamp Miami in 2015, which was the first WordCamp that I ever attended. Mm -hmm. uh, I was there. Uh, as an intern for a company and my boss was speaking. So I went with him to, you know, take pictures and tweet about it and stuff like that. And um, I participated in, we have, I don't know if every WordCamp does it, does it. I haven't been to a WordCamp that is in Miami yet, but we have a like speaker card contest every year where the person who collects, um, I think it's like the most speaker cards gets a prize. And that year I decided I was going to win, so I harassed as many people as possible. I'm sure there are people who might be listening who might remember me bugging them. Like, can I have your cards? Are you going to use your cards? And so I collected a ton of them, and I got this at the end of the weekend. And I, I treasure it. Um, and I'm drinking water also because it's also 5 o'clock. <laughs> I don't want to be up all night, so I'm drinking that water. Well, I've attended more than 30 camps, and that's the first time I've ever heard about the card thing, and I love it. So I'm going to have to encourage that in other camps as well. Our little Miami tradition. We have these cute little speaker cards, and uh, yeah, you're, the idea is you're supposed to network and talk to people and trade cards. I think it was like you want to have like one of each card, one of every person, and then there was one where you want to have as many as humanly possible. So it's a really fun way to get people, you know, talking to each other. <laughs> kind of like Pokemon or yeah. baseball yeah. cards or whatever. Oh, that's awesome! How fun! And how many did you collect? Do you remember? Oh, I don't remember. It was, I had a whole chunk of them. That I was exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Good for you. And did you follow up with any of those speakers afterwards? Um, a couple of them I, I kind of kept in touch with. Um, oh, good. One of the things I really regret from that camp was not staying in touch as much as I could have. I've mm -hmm. definitely in, in concurrent years stayed in touch with people more. And I still have a couple of those kinds. I think I got rid of most of them because it's just like, uh, <laughs> what are you going to do with them after a while? <laughs> I move, I'm like, why do I have this? Um, but yeah, so some of those people I definitely still, um, I definitely have seen at camps that I've attended since and seen around on Twitter and stuff like that. 
Well, that's exciting. I think of word camps as kind of almost like those mountaintop experiences. Like you kind of build up to it. You're there and you're like, oh my gosh, I just met so-and-so. And oh my gosh, I just met Ellie Dimmons. And like, you know, people fangirl over you and fanboy over whatever the word is now. Um, <laughs> Those kinds of things. And I was telling Allie right before we started today that I mentioned that she was going to be my first guest and somebody was like, oh, I've heard of her and was so excited. So yeah, so people fangirl over you too, Allie. So I just want you to know that that's pretty cool. That's awesome. Mind. That absolutely blows my mind that somebody would like remember me because I've only, I was just telling you right before we started, uh -huh. um, 2015 in Miami, 2017 and then this year were the only camps that I've ever attended. It's just the three and they were all word camp Miami. So for me to have like somebody recognize me makes me like freak out a little bit. <laughs> well, it's not necessarily that they've been to word camp Miami. All you have to do is go to YouTube and girl, you are there. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you do with your YouTube channel. Cause I was like, I like clicked over and I must admit, I'm not a big, like, I don't, I go down the rabbit hole sometimes, but not the mm -hmm. WordPress rabbit hole I'm on there looking at things like Dr. Pimple Popper and you know all those things that are like so socially on right now um, but you have quite a library there so tell us a little bit about what you do with that uh, yeah so I started that channel a couple of years ago and I was like you know I wanted to create you know basic instructional videos because basically the, the where it came from was I was just sick of answering the same questions over and over <laughs> to clients to where it's like well how do I do this and it's like it's not so many times we get questions where that's not a difficult thing to accomplish. It just requires a lot of steps and like you have to know, you know, maybe where in WordPress, where to click. And so I was like, if I just can't like make these videos, I can just send them to people and not have to actually <laughs> talk to them. So I started doing it a few years ago and I made like four and like, I feel like a lot of people have this thing where it's like you have an idea for a project and you get really excited about it and then it's a lot of work and you get distracted by other things and so you kind of just let it fall to the wayside. And so I, I just kind of stopped doing it after a couple of videos and I realized after like two years I went back to the channel because I was like I wonder how many, if, if, I, if, if these videos even got any traction. And there's one of them, which if you go to the channel now, you can see it's about how to create a downloadable I think PDF and MailChimp or something like that. And it has like 14,000 views on it. Oh my and goodness. Was, what? And none of the other videos have nearly that much. They all have like 30, 40, 50 views. But like that one, re I hit a some sort of SEO combination that just What's skyrocketed that so I was like all right well I guess if this one's doing really well like I should keep making the videos and you know get that link juice or you know however you want to talk about it and and that exposure from that post will probably help the other ones so I've been trying to keep up with it um this last week or two I haven't really been making them my goal is two per week I think that might be a little over ambitious um, but yeah, they're basically just all of these things where a client will ask me, you know, well, I want Google Analytics. Can I, how do I do that? And it's like, well, it's not hard to just set up a Google Analytics account, but your average person just isn't going to know. And a lot of the, the tutorials that are out there are built for, you know, somebody like you or me who works in the industry and just missed that. Like, oh, I never learned how to do that. I should pick that up. And so we have a lot of like, secondary knowledge that helps us to understand that testimonial or that testimonial, that tutorial. Um, but your average person who's setting up their own website all by themselves doesn't, the, the tutorial might be very technical or intimidating to them. Um, so I figured if I'm making these videos and I'm basically explaining it like to like a second grader, like mm -hmm. this is how I will show you step by step using everyday language, how to do this. Um, that was really, that was really my goal with it. So, um, I feel, I feel like it's really small. I only have like 12 or something videos up there at, at the time, but I, I, I definitely want to eventually to be a, a library and a resource for people to kind of be like, well, I don't have time to go through this and sit on the phone with you and explain it to you. So here's a, here's a quick video that'll walk you through it. That'll be, you know, easy to understand and, and stuff well, like that. And you have almost 300 subscribers too. So it's not like nobody's looking at you. you had <laughs> I think that also, that also comes with time. Like that, that channel has been up there for a really long time. 
And um, I was looking at the metrics actually the other day of how many people are, the, for the amount of people who are watching the videos, how many of them are actually subscribed? And it's like 2% or something. So I think a lot of those subscribers were from a long time ago and they may not be um, keeping up with it anymore. And of course the goal is to increase that number for sure. Um, well, you increased by one today because I subscribed. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's awesome. Fantastic. Um, so how did you get started with WordPress? So like we know the, some of the stuff you're doing right now, but what was your like your gateway drug into uh, WordPress? <laughs> well, that, that internship that I mentioned a little bit earlier, I was working for that company. It was an agency uh, here in Boca and um, they use WordPress. They were a WordPress house. So I most of my uh, introduction to WordPress was just kind of diving into these sites that we were already managing or maintaining or, you know, updating and just very on the job learning. Um, I was shadowing another developer for a little while. Um, and then it was just sort of like, you know, Allie, we need X, Y, Z done. And it's like, all right, I got to go in here and figure out, you know, and it was, it was a decent environment in that I could, you know, people could explain to me if I really got stuck, but it was very like learning on the job. Um, and we used themes for, for everything. We didn't really have anybody there who was, you know, coding sites from scratch. Mm -hmm. So I started off with Jupiter theme, which is a theme forest theme, I think. Uh, and I made the switch to Divi recently. And so I've been using Divi for absolutely everything and I love it. So I'm um, a Divi girl. I use Divi for everything. I love Divi so much. Me too. Me too. <laughs> Shout out to Divi. Shout out to Divi. <laughs> so I've used a shovel before, right? So that's a tool. I do not ever want to be somebody who goes out and digs for a living. So you use WordPress as a tool. What mm -hmm. made you go from, hey, I've used WordPress as a tool to, hey, I want a career with WordPress stuff? Well, I always want it. Well, I'm, I shouldn't say always. Going into that internship and that agency job, I wanted to build websites and I wanted to design websites. And so prior to that job, I had taught myself uh, HTML and CSS and a lot of just basic design and marketing concepts out of library books and online resources. Like I used uh, Udemy, Udemy. I've never actually said that out loud. <laughs> I don't know how to say it either, but I know what you mean. Yeah. Uh, cold school code academy and I just because this is what I thought like if you're going to be a web designer you had to know how to code which right. amazingly like coming into the agency job I was like oh I can design without having to code because I I'm not a coder I oh I don't like it at all I love building websites and I love all of the the intricacies that go into it and I love like the open community of WordPress and how it's just all of these different creators whether you're creating code or you're designing things you know collaborating together and i have infinite respect for people who code yeah. i don't like doing it at all <laughs> i like designing something and seeing it and being able to to, to work with it that way sure. um so when i got that job and i was like oh wow i can build without having to code through wordpress i was like that that's just like that was my magic carpet like that was the key mm -hmm. to being able to move forward in the way that i wanted to that's really exciting. I mean, I think a lot of us have very similar stories. We just all came here by a different way, you know? Um, you're a great deal younger than I am. It's like when I was growing up, there was no internet. So I could never have said as a child, I want to be a web designer when I grow up, you know? <laughs> but um, yeah, so it, no, that's very exciting. I love, um, I love to hear people's stories about that. One of the things I think of, I mean, I look at hundreds of sites a week. I'm sure you do too. Um, and one of the things I notice is that not everybody does everything right. right. And there seems to me, I think every one of us has a different focus on what we think every site should have. Uh, what do you think that you, that you see when other people build sites is something they might skip over or skimp on um, where they're not necessarily focused enough to make it like just as good as it should be? Is there anything in particular that you think comes across that way? two things which I think like the first leads into the other. I'm, my whole motto is plan the work, work the plan. I am, I am a planner. Like I like having a, a roadmap, a wireframe, a strategy, like whatever, whatever that initial like thing needs to be where I'm going to lay everything out on the table and like, 
Like I'm the kind of person that like, if I'm doing a puzzle, like I have to put all of the pieces like yeah. other side up. I got to organize them by color. Like I, I'm a little bit anal in that way. So sometimes you'll see a site and it's like, there doesn't really seem to be any strategy here. Mm. Like you're just saying stuff and maybe it like looks pretty, but I'm not getting, I'm, I'm not seeing a trajectory. I'm not seeing like a user journey that was created. I'm not seeing like a path for the user to follow to get to the end goal of like, this site is for X. This site is for you to purchase. This site is for you to sign up. This site is for you to call. Like sometimes it's just, here's a bunch of information with really salesy copy maybe and flashy stuff and then a contact page, but I'm not seeing that path. Um, I worked with a, a, a client recently, I'm not gonna say who, cause I don't wanna blow anybody up. Um, but her, her copy for her site had already existed and I was doing a redesign. And I was kind of really trying to pull that marketing language out of her. Like, I understand you do X, Y, Z, and then the person is supposed to call you, but there needs to be a bridge because if you have somebody coming to your site, usually they are confused about something, they're overwhelmed by something, they are feeling some sort of negative emotion and they want to feel comforted. We all want to feel comforted. Like we want to right. feel like this person is going to solve my problem. Thank God. Like that relief of like, I've found my solution and that's what makes you hurriedly, you know, type in a, a contact form or, or pick up the phone to call somebody. So I'm like, you're offering a lot of great information, but there's not that, that language of, call me and here's what's going to happen next. You know, like here's the solution that I'm offering for you. It's just like, you have this problem. I'm really qualified. Call me. And I'm like, that's not, we need to get more out of, out of it than that. So exactly. I think that's, that's what I look at when I look at a lot of sites sometimes where I'm like, it's, it's just not, it's not laid out in a strategic way. Um, and then that kind of leads into like, just like design pet peeves that bother me of, things being not necessarily even un asymmetrical because you can have really good asymmetric design, but things being unbalanced and things being just not thought out properly. Like if you have the same font for every single type of copy on your site, <laughs> but then every once in a while you have a different color or like, you know, when you have buttons that are the same color as backgrounds and I'm like, I don't, like I have a philosophy that I stand by for every single client that if it is clickable, nothing else can be that color. So if we're gonna have our buttons be pink, our buttons and our links are gonna be pink. Nothing else can be pink because right. that, like those things need to stand out because they're important. So it makes me crazy when I see sites where just everything is blue. And I'm like, I don't know where to put my mouse. I don't know what to click on. You're I don't even know where crazy. to put my eyes. Yeah. <laughs> like, where do I look? Yeah. yeah. And that I think comes from a lack of, of strategy, a lack of looking at each piece individually like a roadmap and, and how it's going to lead the person on the path to actually, you know, take that action that you want them to take. So I think that's what makes me the most crazy when I look at sites. And then when I look at really good sites that like, I can see that I'm just like, oh my gosh, this is fantastic. It just feeds your soul, right? <laughs> yeah, it feels so good. I um, I was at WordCamp Hamilton this past weekend and I sat down with somebody at the happiness bar and they mm -hmm. said, I don't understand it, but when I'm working on the back end of the site, I can see my links. I can see the text that I put the links on, but then when I publish it, all my links just disappear. Mm -hmm. I said, well, let's take a look at that. I said, well, it could be that your link color is the same as your background color. <laughs> so technically they're there but you just can't see them so we shifted we shifted the color we kept it in the same palette mm -hmm. but we shifted the color so it popped actually out of the background and then everything she said oh my goodness you're good at this <laughs> so well, I'm glad you think so that's so sweet that's adorable. it was I love solving problems and I love when they're that easy right right for, for that sure and then when the client is that thankful Right. I mean, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I love that. I love to give gratitude and I do love to get gratitude. You're right. Absolutely. <laughs> when you think back to when you started your companies and I remember to say companies with the S when you started your companies, 
what's something that you wish you'd known starting out that you've learned since then that you think, man, if I'd only known this in either running a company or web design or any of those kinds of things, what do you wish you'd known then that you know now that you could pass on to other people who oh, maybe you're thinking about starting out? Michelle, there's a lot of stuff. We could do oh. a whole episode on that. Um, Pick your top four. <laughs> I actually have a blog post called like the things I wish I knew. Um, I'll do, I'll do two quickly. Okay. One is kind of more of a hard thing, like action, and one is a little bit softer. Okay. Um, taxes. I had no idea how taxes were. I started my first business when I was 23, 22. So I was, I was even younger than I am now, right? Um, ridiculously, I had no idea what I was doing because I left slash had to leave that first job. And I was like, well, I don't know what to do now but I want to do this. So I'm just going to do this and hopefully people will pay me. That was my, that was my business plan. Hopefully um, they'll pay me. <laughs> yeah. And I literally didn't know how taxes worked. Um, I thought, this is embarrassing. I thought that a deduction, right? So like if we're, if you and I go out to lunch and if we're talking about WordPress, so we're going to write it off as a business lunch. I thought that, you know, if you spend $20 on that lunch, that meant that when you file your taxes, you get $20. You get that $20 back. I thought okay. that it just didn't matter. So this, this was my level of understanding of how taxes work. And I didn't realize, I don't know how I didn't realize this, that when you freelance, you don't, your taxes obviously don't come out of your paycheck. So you don't get a paycheck. So you have to, you don't really, you're probably not going to get a refund, at least not at the beginning. So that right. first year when like taxes came around, I was like, I, owe you all this money? What the heck? <laughs> so I've been paying for that mistake for years. Cause now, even though I've, I've understood how it is supposed to work, right. um, I'm, st I'm still always like back paying that money and backpedaling out of that mistake. So that was, that was a really boneheaded kind of mistake that I've been paying for dearly for a long time. Um, and well, the good I, news is that you were successful enough to have to pay taxes. So that's a good thing, right? <laughs> you know, in that first year, I might not have been, and I might have just done it. And I don't know. I don't. I don't really know. And even still, I'm not. I don't know a ton about what I'm. I just kind of now go to another person. And I'm like, just help me do this for yeah. me. I don't. Um, I'm, I don't. I'm, I, don't I'm, I always say CPAs shouldn't build websites, and I shouldn't do my own taxes. <laughs> for sure, hundred percent. Um, and the, 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 the other thing, the softer thing, the thing that I realized more recently is this community. Like we were just kind of talking a little bit before the call about the WordPress community. And I got a taste of it in, in 2015 when I attended that first WordCamp. And I was like, these people are amazing. Like I, I remember sitting there, never having even like kind of built my own website by myself yet. I was such a baby. And I was like, I want to do what these people do. Like, I felt like I was in the presence of like royalty. I like idolized these people. I, like, I want to do this. And so when I got in 2017, yeah, 2017, when I spoke at, I got to speak at WordCamp. That was like my proudest moment. I was like, this is like, I've made it, you know, this is fantastic. Um, but the level of support that I've seen from, from this community is remarkable and it's taught me such a lesson about you get what you give. Mm -hmm. So after I spoke uh, in March at our WordCamp this year and I remember feeling really stupid because um, Adam Warner from GoDaddy, amazing guy, very proud to call him my friend now. He was the very first person to say hello to me at, at oh, WordCamp. Right. He was the first person to turn in and shake my hand and introduce himself to me. And we ended up sitting next to each other and we were chatting and, you know, like you do, we exchanged Twitter handles and I don't, I didn't use Twitter in between camps. I took it, put it on my phone for WordCamp and then I took it off because I didn't like Twitter. And so I re-downloaded Twitter and I noticed that I had gotten a Twitter message from him like two weeks prior where he had seen my name on the speaker list and had a question for me. And I was like, is this you? And he was like, that's you. And I was like, yeah. So I was like, all right, I really need to like up my Twitter game. I need to stay on Twitter. I need to be connected to people. And so I've made a conscious effort to be more active on Twitter since March. And I mean, that's how I encountered you. Um, I was on Joe Casabona's podcast. I think that's coming out next month. Um, 
like staying in touch with people like Adam, like Josepha Hayden follows me on Twitter now and I'm like, this is amazing. <laughs> I know, it's exciting. She is my Wonder Woman, like she's amazing. She is amazing. She gave the um, keynote at WordCamp St. St. Louis last year. She was phenomenal. She gave the keynote at uh, WordCamp Miami this past year. She did like yeah. a fireside chat. It was really cool. Um, oh, that's awesome. Just being active in this community and, um, you know, posing questions and answering questions and joining into conversations and just chatting with people. And um, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm an introvert. I don't like networking. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I hate it. It makes me very uncomfortable. Um, but it's so easy to do in this community because people genuinely care. And mm -hmm. th there is this feeling of, you know, I help you out. Maybe you'll help me out type of thing, obviously, because we're all here at the end of the day to pay our bills. But it's an extremely supportive community where, mm -hmm. you know, um, David Bissett, who's our he just actually stepped down, I think, as our WordCamp Miami organizer. He tweets all the time about his keto diets and his keto recipes that he makes with his kids. So, like, I'll sit there and I'll see tweets from him about, like, UX and accessibility and, and you know, PHP requirements. But then he tweets about his, like, keto recipes. And I'm like, this is just, this is just a fun community of people. And I wish that I had tapped into it a lot earlier, honestly. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, no, I, I agree with you 100%. And one of the things that David also does is he tweets yeah. out um, his armchair word camp. Do you ever see him do that? Yeah. And uh, I love when I show up in there. So like right before WordCamp Hamilton this last weekend, I got tagged in his, you know, armchair word campers tweet. And I was <laughs> like, oh, I made David's list again. <laughs> it was very <laughs> exciting. <laughs> yeah, he's the I'm, I'm kind of sad that he, he's not going to be organizing uh, or the lead organizer at WordCamp Miami anymore. Um, I mean, the, the people who are, are succeeding him are equally as yeah. gorgeous and fantastic. Um, but he's, well, he's they, really- They only let us do it for a couple of years and then we have to pass the torch oh, so they get more people that. involved. Yeah. yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And see, that's, yeah. that's just another, I love that. That's, yeah. that makes so much sense now. Just sure, because then it's not, it's not my, you know, my yeah. community, it's the WordPress community. And so Michelle did it for a couple of years and passed the torch because I was the lead organizer for the first two camps in Rochester. And then I got to share that with other people, which is exciting. That is exciting. That's yeah. So I love that advice to get part, get involved in the community and learn your taxes or find a yeah. CPA who does. Those are great, <laughs> great, great, great. Um, so you have spoken at WordCamps then. Tell us just like a couple of, how many times have you spoken? What have you spoken about? Spoken twice. I spoke in okay. 2017, um, and I talked in our uh, freelancers track, and I talked about how I train my clients. Mm. So, um, including the language as far as like training throughout the process. So, like in the contracts, in the proposal, I say you get unlimited free WordPress training. When the project is complete it's in the contract even though it's free like I put it in the contract I put yeah. it in like any sort of like road mapping documentation that I provide um in our like Trello board where we have the whole process laid out it's there's a card for the training um and I just make sure that they understand that I'm here to be an educational resource I'm not here to just build you something and say here and leave like, mm -hmm. I want you to understand the tool that you've been given. Because otherwise, to me, it's like if you, if you buy, like, this, like, a toaster. Well, everyone knows how to use a toaster. If you buy an appliance that you've, like, never used before, and it doesn't come with directions. Right. That's, all right, I might break this thing trying to figure out how to use it, you know? Like, you spend all this money on something you want to understand at least the bare minimum of how it works. Because I'm like, if you right. then hire a developer after me, I hope you don't, but if you do, uh, if you hire somebody after me to come in and, and, and work with this thing, I want you to understand the value of that service. I want you to understand, you know, somebody shouldn't be charging you $500 an hour to come in and, you know, change the text on one button. Like, it's not that serious. Because right. um, a lot of the people that I work with are very, very not tech savvy. They're a little bit older. And so they don't, they're very, very apprehensive about doing anything and touching anything and breaking anything and I'm like I want you to, to um and then my talk this year I talked about how I make my process more fun which mm -hmm. in turn makes it easier 
to move through. And I kind of argued that if the, if the process is fun and the client feels like they're enjoying themselves, they will be more comfortable and they will be able to ask more questions. And so you end up with fewer misunderstandings and fewer of those, you know, those emails that you get where it's like, well, I thought X, Y, Z was going to happen. And why am I being charged for this and this and that? And, you know, all of those crazy misunderstandings that happen that totally break down the relationship. If, if everything is super open at the very beginning and they feel comfortable enough to, you know, inquire, then you prevent a lot of those sorts of misunderstandings. So I talked about like how I use Trello and how I like customize my Trello boards to make them really pretty and just make the client feel very like catered to, like this is our space together to create something, you know, we're not just going to be sending emails back and forth and it's not going to be that thing where you send me an email and then you don't hear from me for three weeks. Like we're in it together. We're going to have a good time. And, um, yeah, and how that how that has paid off as far as like referrals, like seventy five percent of my business in twenty eighteen came from referrals. So, the the value of the customer experience in the in the virtual service world, because we think of customer experience like like storefront type of thing. Like when you go to a physical location, we don't think about it so much when we're providing digital or virtual services. So those are the two talks that I've done so far. I love it. I just gave a talk this last weekend on how to empower your clients to use their websites there you go. And, and client proof them at the same time. And <laughs> I had, I, I had a full room and I made some good memes I'll share with you later that you might like. <laughs> oh, I love that. I love that. What's, uh, when you think back over the talks that you've heard, does any one um, topic or any one speaker stand out to you? Jeez. Oh, and not to put you on the spot or anything. There are so many. I mean, that first year alone, I do remember uh, Morton Hendrickson talking about um, flex boxes, which like, even as a non-coder, I was like, oh, wow, this is like magic. Um, I remember my friend Louise, who she and I, uh, Louise Treadwell, she and I are actually really good friends because she literally, like, I can like see her house from my window. She lives oh, so that's close. Cool. Um, so we hang out and we do like co-working stuff all the time. She gave a really good talk about, um, pricing your services where she like literally gave a formula for developing your pricing, which is incredibly valuable. And I've used it ever since, um, nice. this past year at WordCamp Miami was beautiful because so many people talked about mental health and mm -hmm. talked about overwhelm and anxiety and, and being healthy, um, Scott Mann gave a, like, like people were like crying. Like he gave a beautiful talk wow. about a, a, a part of his life that he's been struggling with and um, was just absolutely beautiful. And um, yeah, there were a lot of talks that really hit me this year specifically that were about just mental health and, and, and the community and the things that we struggle with as, you know, people who sit in a chair all day long. And how people think that, oh, that's so easy. You just sit in a chair and make money. And it's like, no, it's real hard. <laughs> it's really hard sometimes. And it's really hard in the freelance world where you're sitting by yourself. Yeah. You know, some, of, some people have work for companies and even they still sometimes work alone if you're a distributed company. But if, if you have the pleasure of being with people, so I, I work with three other people in my office mm -hmm. here for Give um, in our physical space. But prior to that, I spent six years sitting in a chair by myself in a 10 by 10 room and I completely understand. So yeah, and I, I agree. You can't learn enough about your keeping yourself healthy mentally and, and otherwise, of course. Yes. Um, so what, um, like, are there any other things that you think, gosh, I wish she'd asked me about such and such. <laughs> like, tell um, me about your family or any of that kind of stuff. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of anything. I mean, my, my, my family is, is my mom who lives a couple of miles away and my boyfriend who's currently in the other room, probably playing video games and, um, <laughs> trying yeah. to stay quiet. <laughs> to stay quiet. Um, yeah, I mean, my, my life right now is just, is very much just sort of like work and then trying to leave the house when I can, like we're big on movies. We see a lot of movies. Mm -hmm. Um, we saw Godzilla the other day and I remember just thinking like, man, I wish instead of watching this, I was watching Avengers for the fourth time. Um, <laughs> that good, huh? <laughs> um, I don't know. There, 
I'm gonna I'm gonna go right into our rapid fire questions then if you're okay with that. So I know I gave you a little bit of a heads up on what they were. So um, so my rapid fire questions are: What are two to three of your must-have plugins, paid or free? Uh, Yoast, uh, Pop Up Zen, which is a very new 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 plugin. I found it on Twitter. Um, oh shoot, what was the other one that I was thinking of? Um, I'm just gonna say uh, color color lib, color okay. lib. They uh, have a lot of like custom login screens and things like that. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yoast you use, of course, for SEO. Mm -hmm. And pop oh, and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say Divi accessibility. Also, there is a specific. Oh. Talking about Divi before, there's a specific accessibility plugin that works with Divi to allow you to make little tweaks and changes to increase the. Uh, accessibility friendliness of your design. So those are my gonna have to. I'm gonna have to check that one out. When you, um, and then I'll just shameless plug here, when you are working with your nonprofits, take a look at Give, because uh, that's where I look, that's who I work for, so. Um, <laughs> I, and I have to agree, uh, Yoast is one I always put on too. Um, you know, I've got my, my favorites, of course, um, but yeah, I think those are great. So um, let's see, what's one of the biggest WordPress mistakes you've made and how did you learn from it? I once, against my better judgment, launched a redesigned website on a Friday, which that was one of the things I learned at my agency was never to launch, never launch on Friday. <laughs> and it was a client who was, we were already struggling a little bit with a lot of things. And I just really wanted to kind of preserve that relationship. And she was like, you know, I'm attending a conference this weekend and I really want the site to be up and blah, blah, blah. And I, I was like, you know what? It, it should be easy. It should be fine. It, it'll be okay. And I broke everything. <laughs> I broke no. everything. The site was not working. Her email was, was down. It was a bad jam. And I was up at, I have very, very strict like work time boundaries that I don't work past X period of time. Mm -hmm. And I was up at like four o'clock in the morning trying to figure this out for her and we ended up getting it figured out and mm -hmm. you know but the the thing was the whole weekend her site was down and she was annoyed because she was at her conference and I I get that I totally get that and it was totally my fault um we got it fixed on Monday when the site ground people were back in the office and could help me <laughs> um but yeah that and what made it so frustrating was I knew I shouldn't have done it because I yeah. that's a rule that I've had that I've never broken and I broke my own rule and it was the one time it was the worst just conflama of problems that I'd had to deal yeah. with ever. and it was on the weekend and during a really important weekend and yeah so I, I, what I learned from that is to stick with my own rules. <laughs> don't break my own rules the fastest way to lose your weekend is to launch a site on Friday <laughs> It's, it's one of the best things I learned at that agency job, yeah. which was not, not a great job, but that was the, probably the number one thing I learned there. There Don't. you go. <laughs> Very good. What's your proudest WordPress moment? Um, probably when I spoke, well, hmm. I was going to say the first WordCamp that I spoke at, um, but in the moment, I wasn't very proud because I, it, was, it was during our freelancer workshops. So it was really, I had a really small group of people, 15 people or something. And um, I froze in the middle of it and completely just forgot everything. And so I stumbled through the rest of it and I just didn't really feel like I did a very good job. Um, so I think the moments leading up to that, I was really, really proud. And then I felt like I kind of blew it. Um, but I think my actual proudest moment, a couple of weeks ago, I went to a local WordPress meetup that uh, David Bissett was, was organizing. And this guy, so this is two years ago that I spoke. I, I think I asked a question or something and this guy was like, hey, you spoke at WordCamp about training your clients that time. And I was like, you remember me? And he was like, yeah, that was a really good talk. And I was like, what? <laughs> so I think that, that, that validation of yeah. like somebody remembered it, they had a positive impression of it. I didn't mess it up as much as I thought. I think that that kind of really cinched it for me. That was a good for you. Oh, that's exciting. That's exciting. Um, what's something you wish you'd done when you started WordPress? We talked about that a little bit already. I'm looking at the wrong questions because uh, <laughs> this is my first podcast. I'm making mistakes now. Um, 
If you weren't working in web, what is another career you might want to attempt? See, that's, that's kind of a funny one because I actually started out in theater. My, my college major was theater and I didn't like that and I dropped out of that and I started doing this. But I also always really wondered about cinematography. I'm really into film um, and that's, I took a really intensive two year IB film course in high school, which he said at the beginning of the course, he's like, you'll never be able to watch a movie in a relaxed <laughs> state ever again. And it, it was entirely true. Um, so I always really wanted to kind of be a cinematographer. Um, that's cool. It's just something I really, really think is fascinating and fun. And it's visual storytelling, which I think one of the things that theater, cinematography, and web design all have in common is visual storytelling. So I think that's kind of my, my thing, I suppose. That's awesome. No, I love that. And I love cinematography too. When I walk away from a film, even if it was the crappiest film ever, as far as like plot and dialogue, if it was good cinematography, I still feel like I got something out of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah so that's awesome. So tell us something on your bucket list. Um, to go outside of the continental United States. I've cool. never been outside of the U.S. I, that's not true. I went to Canada when I was very, very small, but I don't really remember that. Um, so yeah, I really, I want to get out of this country and like experience other things. So I feel like it's not an unrealistic bucket list item. Not at all. Um, but yeah, I'm just kind of like frustrated that I'm 27 and I've never been to another country before. So that's something I really, really want to do. I, I have a feeling you'll do it. My daughter is 27 as well, so now I feel very old. Thank you. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> I own my years. I'm good with it. I'm totally good with it. Um, but you know what? Think about WordCamp US, baby, next year. Set a goal. Put a tip jar on your, on your website. You never know. <laughs> and then um, either show us or tell us about one of your hidden talents. See, this is the, the, one of the ones you warned me about that I really struggled with I've been thinking about it ever since I got that I even asked my boyfriend I was like what are my what are my like hidden talents and he just started saying stuff that I'm good at and I'm like those aren't like hidden talents the, the only thing I could land on that seemed mildly interesting was I can go grocery shopping with like a, a you know budget in mind and I don't need to look at prices or like I'll look at the price of something but I don't need to like add everything up I could just sort of throw things in the cart and be like, all right, that's about this much money. And no, if I need to put one thing back to like meet my goal, like I can do that. I don't know where that came from. I don't know why I can do that. <laughs> it's very <laughs> easy. It takes me a lot of time. And I mean, what? That's one so what, what I just heard is that you're a grocery savant and I love that. I think I, you should put that on really like your resume. <laughs> I really, if, if I could get paid to go grocery shopping for people, I would just have an absolute, I love grocery shopping. So I think that. Actually, they, ha they have that now. It's called Instacart and that's how I get my groceries. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I should look into that little gig economy thing to do. I should, I should so You do never know. Side <laughs> if, if you have a month that's a little bit slow and web, just go shopping for other people's groceries. It's all good. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. So tell us where we can find you on the web. Tell us your social medias, things like that, so people can find you. I'm not super duper active on social media. It's probably a big flaw that I should work on, but I am very active on Twitter, and it's just Ali underscore Nimmons. Nimmons is like Simmons, but with an N instead of an S. Um, I'm on Instagram at Pixel Glow Web Design. I'm on Facebook at Pixel Glow Web Design, but the best place to connect is probably going to be uh, Twitter. Okay, very good. And for everybody who's interested, I will definitely get all of those links from Allie and we'll put them in the description of the video. So, um, so you'll be able to have those. So uh, last words, is there anything else that you think you'd might like to just kind of throw out there as, as a WordPress do, don't, love, hate, any of those kinds of things? Um, I think really just kind of going back to what I said about the community of like, you yeah. get out it what you put in and, and if you put in the time to you know connect with some people on Twitter like people are a lot sweeter than you might think um I'm going to really quick anecdote to, to drive that home um I'm going to WordCamp Jacksonville at the end of the getting month, out of which Miami is, <laughs> which is gonna be my first out of town WordCamp I'm so excited still in the same Good. state progress and um somebody gifted me a ticket 
And I was like, well, I don't know that I can afford the, the flight and the hotel. Like all that is such a surprise expense. And I was like, I'll, I'll figure it out. So I posted the question to Twitter. If anybody's looking for a roommate who's going to Jacksonville and immediately I got a message from someone who was like, yeah, I got you. Like, I'll get a room. Don't worry about it. And amazing. let's do it. And I was like, wow, like, wow, wow, wow. So I'm not saying like, you know, people will give you free stuff, but right. reach out and ask for help and ask questions. And what I, I think what I struggled with is just sort of like being vulnerable and like saying, I don't know, or I need help or I'm struggling or whatever, but yeah. people will be very receptive and people will help you. And a lot of times the best therapy is then turning around and helping somebody else. So yeah. Be, a- think, be active, ask questions. I think Join us of the here. WordPress community, we're a very mm-hmm. pay it forward community. Yeah. We really are. You know, somebody helped me up the ladder. I turn around and help the person behind me too. Uh, I think that that's how most of us are in WordPress. And it's just, it's, I agree. It's very heartening. I think of my WordPress family as WordPress family. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you my, my little, um, my one little anecdote that you can take with you also is uh, I moved last year. And I had, I moved from a a 3,000 square foot house and into a 750 square foot apartment. And, um, you know, my family kind of, my kids all went everywhere. My husband and I broke up, whatever. But um, I posted on Facebook uh, so that my local friends would be able to see. I said, I'm moving. I need help on uh, whatever day it was at five o'clock. If you can come, please help me. I knew my brother was coming and I knew one high school friend was coming. So at, at five o'clock, 15 people showed up, 13 of them were from WordPress. That's yeah. Nice. And I cried, I cried. I thanked them. I cried some more because I was just <laughs> so touched by the fact that it wasn't even like, let me help you with your website or, you know, you can stay with me at a work camp, but let me actually help you move into your new home. So yeah. yeah. Totally unlike work really. That's so gorgeous. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons I'm doing this podcast, because I want people like you to be able to tell people all over the place, the story of WordPress and how you fit into it and how they can fit into it. And, uh, you know, just overall, what an amazing community of people we all are. So thank you so much for being on the show. Thanks for being my first person, my first guinea pig. And uh, I'm very excited about it. So um, I'm going to say, you know, we'll say goodbye to your, your uh, adoring fans. (laughs) And follow Allie, and uh, we'll see you next time.